Good morning. Stream is about a day, 24 hours earlier than usual. Normally I have my stream on Sunday morning. I'm doing it Saturday morning because I have something I can't get out of tomorrow. I can't reschedule. So I brought it forward. Hello. Hope you could all make it. And for those of you who assumed I'd be there like clockwork, the clock has gone to daylight savings or whatever. Anyway, let's get onto the stream. If you would like to ask me a question during this stream, if you're here live and you have an interesting point of view, given the discussion um, I'm having today with you guys, or you would like to ask an interesting question, don't be a troll, keep it civil. We're always discussing interesting things, even when we're having fun, we're not being children. So the discussion I want to have today, I think is something that uh, it's been very important to me the last couple of weeks, and it's really, really been effective. And you could translate this to anything you're having a problem with uh, in your life, uh, change, uh, changing your behavior. You tend to get stuck in old habits and old patterns of thinking. And even though you'd love to be different, you just, and it's also following on from last week's video of the trap of self self label labeling. So I thought this was a really nice segue and an important addition. In fact, I actually think it's more important than self labeling, but it's connected to it where in this prior stream, uh, go have a look where I talked about how it's, you, you need to be very careful about proudly labeling yourself a certain way because you've always been that way. And then also people in your life, your family, your friends and whatever, they see you a certain way and they reinforce that label that could be holding you back from actually being lighter and happier and things like that. So what I wanted to talk about today was actually changing that behavior and what has worked for me. And I've seen the effectiveness of it working for me and you may or may not be able to do it yourself or to the degree to which you can do it as opposed to me, and someone could do it even more than I can, but it's actually been very effective for me in the last couple of weeks. About a month or so ago, I got a bad cold and I, I wasn't even do I didn't even do the stream for a couple of weeks, so I was under the weather. And once I got better, you want to get back into, you know, going for a jog, fitness, back into your normal routines that your 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 cold kept you from. And it's a perfect opportunity to go back into things with enthusiasm. And one thing I, I kind of stumbled across during that time, and it was probably fortuitous that, you know, these things kind of aligned because I was interested in getting back on track again and, you know, unpausing myself. I came across Aristotle's quote, Aristotle's quote, which is, we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence then is not an act, but a habit. So it's the habit of doing constantly. And that's actually what we are. We're not what we hope to do, not what we plan to do, not what we wish to do. And then even simplified, we are just what we do. And the do was the important thing. And that's what I wanted to do once I could jog and work out again and my immune system was okay. And now I can actually get back into the things that make me feel give me some sense of normalcy in my life again. And the do part, if you whittle down Aristotle's quote to we are what we actually do, not what we believe we can be or who we wish we can be and this higher version of ourselves and the best version of ourselves that never gets realized, but the actual actions that that person does. And I realized when I started to get back into my actions, jogging, working out and things, and, and not just doing them lightheartedly, but setting a time and schedule and doing them habitually, just like I have a shower at night and brush my teeth and do all of those necessary things. And uh, what, I, what I found was that if I just focus on the doing, things got much easier. So, like, because I, I have a tendency which I'm sure most of you do, is to get stuck in your own habits and believe in, again, your label that I talked about last week. 
your label of who you are and you're very proudly that because you have a sense of who you are. It's really good to, you feel good knowing what you stand for, who you are, whether you like chocolate or vanilla, coffee, tea, all of those things. You, there's a sense of clarity and security when you actually know who you are, like yes, no. And I've talked about this, standing up for your values and having boundaries. But sometimes the boundaries and values we set upon ourselves and the labels we have of ourselves, like I am this, doesn't actually serve you uh, really well. Because if we, those of you who are fine, I'm not telling you you need to change. But for a lot of us out there that we're sick of looping the same patterns and we wish we just could get up in the morning or lose weight or be more confident or this or that. And we're just saying, well, that's just the way I am. I can't do that. I'm not that kind of person. Easy for you. You're naturally like that. Maybe they're not. I would say most people aren't naturally that way. I think the the people who are, are confident and can speak, they're always practicing that mechanism and they can tell you what they do and how they go about it. It's not just the self-belief that's just magically happens. But even if they were born with a little bit more confidence than you did or in an environment that was a little bit better than yours was and with less restrictions than you had, that they keep ha practicing the habits that keep them being, for want of a better word, better than you or the you that, wish you that you wish you were more of. You know, you see examples of people that are better at something that you wish you were better at, uh, even in personality, just the way they are. They don't have as much temper they're you know much more this way naturally you think than you are and it's a real struggle for you so if you really believe you're a certain way and it's immovable then you won't change your belief in is, is so great that you won't change and anytime you think i oh, wish i could yeah but you know what i can't i'm just like this it's different if you're five foot nothing and you want to dunk I mean, there's even guys there that can dunk the ball. They work really hard. They have such self-belief and work ethic that they eventually do it. If it's worth it to you, yes. But not all of us are born with the advantages that someone else has. But your will is a huge thing. So if you're comfortable with who you are and that's just you, that's fine. But if it's always nagging at you, why, can't, why aren't I confident speaking in public? I wish I was. That was a big reason why I started my streams back in the day. There was no reason to do it, but something nagged at me and I watched people on streams and talk to camera and I wish I was more like that. And I, <clears throat> I just bought it that they're just like that and I'm not and that's the way it is, you know. They're born that way and I'm not and there's nothing I can do about it. But that's not true. The more I listen to them and nearly all of them weren't that way and they got better. Most things are a skill. I've talked about relationships. You stumble and fall naively and you learn and then you do something different or better or you avoid things in, instead of taking a left turn like you did in previous times, you take a right turn this way, this time. So there are ways of doing things differently and therefore you learn. And um, some people never learn. I often, not often, but uh, every now and then, I'll get in the comment section that I've changed. And I actually think change is a great thing, but a lot of people don't. I stubbornly sometimes resist change because I believe that's just the way I am. Can you see how this reinforces you not changing? So I've done this too, sure of myself in various opinions, over-intellectualized things and I stand firm in those convictions because they give me security in life. We all want to feel safe, know who we are, know what our yeses and nos are, but sometimes they're locked in place that we can't be flexible or sharp in those opinions and get better in those things. For instance, if you, if you really believe in something in a black and white way, in a very religious way, what harm is there in discussing with someone what if? Can I question it? Can we ask the question? And if you're like, no, that's blasphemy. You cannot even talk about it in a different way and you shame the person down. That's saying you, you're you really insecure about that point of view. So changing your own uh, perception of your own label and how you think of yourself, I think is a, 
uh, not just courageous, but shows a degree of intelligence. And a lot of us out there, me included in the past, and I'm not putting anyone down, and you're all perfect snowflakes, okay? But those, there's a lot of people that think they're more intelligent than what they are. And I'm not putting you down, but just look up the definition of it. Intelligence isn't just how much you know or how much you're sure of something. Intelligence is the ability to adapt to something that's not working and how quickly you can change to something else, not do the same thing over and over again. So intelligent, intelligence is the rate of learning or rate of adaptation to something. So you do something doesn't work. You hit a brick wall. You do something again, you hit a brick wall. You do something like you can do it 10 times, but the intelligent person hits the brick wall. They change their tactic. They might do it a few times where they've changed their tactic around it in every way. And they think there's no point doing it. Fine. You're intelligent enough to have tried everything possible, including changing your own attitude. And it's not worth it for some other people. They might have, a, you know, environments and things that they can do that uh, they've got advantages that you you have, but there's so many people that give up and they think they're intelligent because they've read something that confirms their biases of who they are, who they want to be. They would rather not try. They would rather not have courage. They would not. They would rather. They would basically rather not try and not not try something that would make their lives better, better and happier. So most of most people out there, including myself in various degrees, we're not as smart as we think we are. If intelligence is the rate of learning and adaptation, I am really dumb because I've learned my lessons very late in life. There are guys in their 20s that have switched on. I can have a conversation with them and I think they're, they're on my page now and I give them props because they can talk on my level at my sense of awareness now and they're at the age of 20 something and so i think they're gonna have a great life going ahead you've got a great advantage like kudos to you man i wasn't uh that intelligent when i was your age this is different from iq right i'm not talking about uh standardized iq tests which are measured differently i'm talking about the general definition of intelligence there's so many people out there you're not intelligent your rate of adaptation and changing to get the better outcome is almost zero. You're as dumb as I was. So <laughs> now that I've got that off my chest, but um, I used to say to myself, for instance, I'm not a morning person, even though I wish I was uh, because I'm more productive in the morning, like most people are, but because I'm not a big people person, I think, ah, I don't want to do what other people are doing. If there's a popular book, that book's stupid because everyone else likes it. Therefore, I know I don't even have to try. I'll do my own esoteric thing and, and live like a vampire over here. I'm a night owl. You, you're proud of your exclusivity of being that lone wolf while everyone's asleep. I, I've said this in streams. I, I'd, go on, I'd go on jogs in the middle of the night at one in the morning, clear, still nights, and I'd feel alive and like, you know, I am legend and uh, the world was mine. And it's a great kind of feeling, but it's very romantic and it's unrealistic. But what I ignored was my sleep suffered. It wasn't consistent. My productivity wasn't consistent. It was always up and down. Uh, yeah, my brain fog. And at the end of the day, when I labeled myself a night owl, my brain was flat and tired and I couldn't do any thinking at the end of the day because my thinking was worn down by the the earlier part of the day from the morning till the night so now i can relax and enjoy stuff i can go for a jog i can watch movies i can play video games i can hang out with guys and chat and things like that i can let go and have fun but i can't actually do any intellectual deep thinking analysis uh computational stuff and 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 really deep philosophical thought and really getting getting to the depths that i enjoy and I, that I'm capable of. I can't really do it in my night owl label. So again, I can either ignore it and keep doing the same thing over and over again, as Einstein said and, and be insane, or I can, as I mentioned here, Aristotle's a, be a better, more constructive example of you are what you do. It's not what you think. You are actually what you do. And the doing part, the do here, is the most essential part. It's not what you think and how much you know and how smart you are, gentlemen and ladies. It's what you actually do. So after coming to this realization, 
this is what I asked myself after, you know, my cold was over and I wanted to get back into things. And fortuitously, I found this quote by Aristotle. I didn't find it. I was reminded of it. I've known about it for a while. And it's like, we are what we do, you know? And I started to think, how would the person I'd like to be act? What would they do? The act, not think enough of that, enough of thinking, switch the brain off human, because I do think a lot. I'm very cerebral. You've noticed by the way I talk, right? How would, what would the person I, I'd like to be do? How would they act? And then just act that way. Not overthinking, not affirmations, not mantras, not journaling, not plans and schedules and none of that. None of that. Just you jump straight to just doing what that person does. Like, that's what I want to do. Oh, but I can't and I'm, on, I'm more, not a morning person and blah. No, just do what that person you want to be does. Just do it. That's it. Just accept you just do that. And here's the beauty of this. This is what I, the light bulb that went off. If I just act the way the future me acts, right? Then I'm already there. I'm him. If what you do is who you are, if I do what I, the future me is, then I'm him. I've jumped forward in time because I'm actually acting like them. Therefore, I am them now. And now everything else is just a matter of waiting time. If I want to lose weight, if I want to write the book, if I want to get healthier, whatever. You jump time because you act like that person. And then you are there. You don't have to wait. It's not a Sisyphean, uh, Sisyphusian boulder push up the mountain. It's not, oh, I'm going to get there one day. No, you instantaneously, you are there because you do the things that person does. And now you just wait. You, you're done. So it's literally time travel, psychologically speaking. Okay. I know it's not reality, psychologically speaking. And again, this works for me, might not work for you, but it might be an insight that can help you in the same way it turned on a, a light bulb for me. But if you think of yourself, you're, you have pride in your immovable label in this, you'll never change. And if you don't feel like changing, fine, do you. But for all the people that don't want to change and they're happy and all the people that point at me and everyone else is saying, you oh, you've changed, man. Who cares? My life's better because I have changed in ways I wish I would and I have changed. Whatever it might be, okay? So... My solution, again, just to reiterate, and then I'll get on to your questions, is if you must see yourself in a certain way, if you must label yourself in a certain way, as in believe in yourself in a certain way, no, this is just the way I am. Label yourself, you know, be careful of the labels other people give you and the negative ones that reinforce bad behavior, but label yourself if you're going to, label yourself differently and believe in that label so it's not i can't get up in the morning it's like no i get up in the morning because that's what i do and also don't negatively label don't say i hate asparagus if you want to eat better just say no i eat uh, i don't mind vegetables or i eat healthier now so don't label in the negative because that actually pushes you further away so label in the neutral or label in the affirmative, but don't label yourself in the negative to keep yourself stuck. Now, label yourself as the person who actually is that way now, because what happens, gentlemen and ladies, is that the evidence of you habitually acting the way you should, you act, you are that person, and you just act the way, regardless of how you feel. I don't care how you feel. I'm talking to myself now. However you feel, and I realize people's circumstances are different. There are some comments I've read that I, I know you can't change as easily as I can. I, I have an environment and um, things that make it uh, easier just to change my mindset if I'm that kind of person. And I realize a lot of people have structurally different things in their lives. But if you can, if you keep doing what the person you want to be does, then as you do it day after day after da day after day, as I have been doing for a couple of weeks now, or a week or so now, is that the evidence of you turning up and doing that will give you the confidence that that actually is you because you keep doing the thing every day. Hey, I've done it. 
this morning, I again woke up early, did a workout, even though previously I hated doing workouts. And I don't want to continually say I hate doing workouts, but I prefer really not to do workouts in the morning. I prefer running at night. I prefer working out at night, et cetera, et cetera. But regardless of how I feel, I did it. So that is me now because I'm actually doing it. And because I keep doing it, I gain evidence that that is who I am. And that gives me the confidence because of my evidence, not self-belief, not journaling, not wishing, not affirmations, not talking into the mirror, but physical showing up evidence that that is who I am. And that's the proof I can give myself, not everyone else, but that is who I am because of what I actually do all the time. So the result is you like yourself more and you don't kick yourself you don't demoralize yourself and you trust yourself more. So there's actually not really a downside. And I know a lot of it's a cognitive struggle to do. But again, if you believe that, it will be more harder than that it is. But if you take feelings, emotions, planning and that thinking off the table and you just focus on the act, take everything off the table. It's not plan, think, motivation, blah, blah, blah and then act. Wipe everything else off and then just, just jump to acting. Act, not in a fake way. Be you. Do what you want to do. Have your goals set in the way you want to do, do them. But if you recognize what the thing is that's healthy and good for you, that you just can't do because you're lazy or you're afraid or whatever, just concentrate on the act. Skip everything else because it's essentially useless and a lot of it is actually avoiding and I'm sure a lot of you can give me examples of where it is dangerous and you should plan. And yeah, I could probably agree with you. But in most stuff that we're avoiding and we're lazy, jump to doing regardless of how you feel. Just act the way the person you'd like to be would act regardless of how the old you feels about things and is intruding. So that's what I wanted to say about this. I thought it's uh, fairly important. Again, just to sum up, what would the person I want to be do. And then you just do that. Focus on the doing. And that's it as a simplistic formula. I know it's not easy, but for me, the simple clarifying way of doing something, if you can eliminate everything to the basics, the big umbrella, that was the big domino that knocks over everything else. This for me was a big uh, removal of a roadblock, or in fact, much more than that. It's the tipping over of a big domino that uh, knocks down everything else. So let me know your comments. I'll, I'll go through some of the comments here during the stream if you're here live. If you would like to ask me a question and you're here live, you want to add three smiley faces like this example here, and then I'll be able to see that it's actually a question from you. I'll say hello to the regulars here during the stream. Luke, Neanderthal, Araya, David P, how are you, man? Okay. Some newbies here as well. Big ol, how are you? Any questions? Add um, three smiley faces if you have any questions. Ah, here we go. Crummy VCR says repeatable results and routine is almost frowned upon because it is a lack of sexiness. If spontaneous is your MO, then expect little to nothing as a constant. No wonder people are lost. No wonder no one lasts. No one, everyone labels consistency boring. I've noticed this in the past when I've uh, come across people that they, you find them refreshing and they find you refreshing, uh, especially on, on the dates I've been in in my old life, where I could tell they found me interesting and refreshing because I was very consistent and very monolithic. Like I acted and spoke the same way and I always turned up exactly the same way. And I had my peculiar life and my peculiar interests and reading and art and all this stuff. And... And they find it very interesting, but after a while, that that newness becomes, well, okay, so you just do this all the time. There's no variation. They actually see you as a new, they see you as, and I'm not putting props on myself, you go on a date and I feel like the chicks see me as 
watching Top Gun. It's just like, oh, this is a refreshingly fun movie. And then they turn up again. It's like, well, Top Gun again. It's like, well, it was refreshing and interesting the first time, but over and over again, no one wants to watch Top Gun again. But you have to be the person that loves turning up and you sing, get a sense of comfort and security, familiarity. You find that stuff attractive, and uh, uh, whereas most people don't. Most people want, at the same time, high variety and high security, and the two things repel each other. And they're forever going on a roller coaster, looping back and forth between the two. It's like, oh, yeah, I finally got everything in order. I've got my habits in order, whatever. Like, I'm I'm getting fit. And then they're like, oh, this is boring. I want to eat donuts. I want to like, like, they want variety again. And they're swinging back and forth. And the same with relationships as well. It's like, no, I want some. I'm tired of being on the carousel. And uh, this is boring. I'm wasting my time. I want to get serious. You get serious. And it's like, no, I want variety again. So the longer you spend in one vari- uh, environment, especially... And the environment of variety can give you instantaneous hits, short-term gratification, but constantly makes you go up and down and not like yourself and lose confidence and you don't actually know who you are or you think you do. But if you're always failing at who you are, then... Uh, some of these comments like big ol I can't read this out because YouTube will slap me on the wrist because of the words you used but uh, you're basically saying my best mate got falsely accused of yeah you know what he's in USA completing his masters but he's looking to turn to the Australia if things get worse how can a man protect himself it is um th- there's no one size fits all um oh hi boffin by the way I would say all you all you can do in this environment, which is very tricky today, uh, we don't have the guardrails like our grandparents did. People off the street don't just have an automatic push to be civil and polite and you know cordial and respectful and not hate each other and have manners and say please and thank you. No, you have no idea what the person's like, let alone what they label themselves as. Uh, people are a complete blank slate now. N- not to mention the laws are worse the institutions and the laws almost actively want people to fight, take each other to court, mistrust each other. The kind of uh, the, the the multiculturalism and uh, people pushing each other away, like we were all in little silos and we were encouraged not to assimilate with each other. And everyone's like not trusting each other. We don't know our neighbors because everyone's just so different and stays in their own little bubble. I've noticed that online as well. People love staying in their own little bubbles. And there's this lack of security that in a community fashion, we used to have much more of in the, in the old days. But um, yeah, all, all I would say is take your time with anyone. You're dating, friends. Before you make a major step in life where you move, jobs you take, things like that, really find out who you are, what you need, and take your time, especially with a person, if you're going to commit to a person or have a long-term relationship, because if they really like you, they're not going anywhere. If they're putting pressure on you, that already gives you a red flag that there's something a little bit off there. So um, let me see. John says, uh, maybe on topic, with age, I care less what people may do if they disagree with me. I now ask myself if I would respect myself more if I spoke my mind or not. Is it a battle worth fighting? Well, if you have to say yes when you need me, no. There's, There's politeness, but there's also agreeing with something that's the opposite of your values and morals. You should have every right to speak whatever you believe to be true or what you have a preference for. But if someone else is shaming you to agree with them, even though it goes against, I I keep encouraging all of you guys to learn how to speak and communicate your thoughts as best you can, because you should be able to, and you have every right to in a conversation when other people are communicating their thoughts and you don't agree with them. We we hear it in the media. All, All the snowflake people are, talking about their point of view. It's just that I'm I'm somehow not allowed to speak my point of view, but everyone else is allowed to speak theirs. It's the same when you're in the company of family and friends. If they all talk a certain way and you would like to offer another point of view that's respectable, eloquent, things like that, and they just shame you. There's no actual objective wrongness in what you're saying or your point of view. They just don't want to listen to you. Again, they either label you a certain way, you're supposed to t- talk this way. It's like, no. 
this is rude behavior. I listen to you. I, I have something to say or, you know, I, I want you to see my point of view or who I am. So it's not a it's not a battle worth fighting, John, if the other person isn't playing tennis back and forth, if they're not respectful, if they're shaming you and they're rude and they basically won't be nice to you or won't listen to you and won't hear anything you have to say unless you talk and act like them. They want a mirror. If they want a mirror and they're rude and they won't see you, then it's a matter of walking away. Crummy VCR says, I've, se I've been seeing an aggressive rise of people lashing out when posed any question to them, like they are fitting like they are fitting out or something. I think people are way over medicated. This is fallout. Possibly. Possibly. Um, Vince Barletta, thank you very much for um, the super chat donation. I really appreciate it. He says, thanks for it from a 20 year old trying to figure it all out. Uh, I appreciate it. Uh, aside from entertaining ourselves like everyone likes to watch entertaining videos that make you feel good where you know women are bad men are good men are bad women are good like this the left is r bad and the right is good or vice versa and this is bad and you can feel good by f slinging mud or you can actually feel better long term by fixing your problems and, and thinking a lot better instead of being entertained by reality tv ah cool thanks uh, luke my sounds and visuals are coming in loud and clear Uh, John says, uh, human did say this is one of his traits. Which trait was that, John? Um, maybe you can elaborate. Okay, I'm just going through and seeing what other comments there are, if any. Any super chats? If you are here live and you would like to ask a question, make sure you add three smiley faces. Just um, so I don't miss what you've said. If you super chat, I'll definitely see it. Um, okay. Rayleigh says, no one loves asparagus. Well, say you know it's going to benefit you. I think you should at least try and be neutral about it and not hate it, not resist it. Sometimes we, we over amplify that we hate something when it really could be seen as a neutrality because if we hate something we really push ourselves in that direction further away from something that should just be nothing if something's healthy for you physically or mentally why do you hate it think about that hmm <laughs> Uh, Blake Spice, uh, Vera. what happened to the guy that would hit on human all the time? Forget his handle name. Um, I can't remember either. Yeah, it was a gay guy. What was his name? He was in Melbourne as well. He's married too. So I can't remember his name. Karu, you remember what his name was. Karu is really good at remembering people's names. Yeah, yeah, he was afraid of his husband cheating on him, yet he was hitting on human. <laughs> Good point. <clears throat> I think I, I mentioned that to him as well. And he was saying, no, I'm just having a bit of fun with you. This is banter, human. I'm not really, you know, we're never going to meet. And so well, I can't remember what he said, but I think, yeah, you're still flirting. Um. Okay. Any any comments or super chats, people? I'm going through your comments right now. Vince says, my girlfriend admitted she was a willing mistress for two years. I like to think she's not that person anymore, but I'm a bit worried thoughts. Spend enough time with her where you convince yourself um, otherwise. Can you live with it? Is she being honest? I think time will tell. If you pay attention and don't excuse bad behavior... If little red flags pop up and you don't question them or or discuss them directly and resolve them, and if you just think, ah, that's nothing, that's nothing, that's nothing, spend enough time and get the truth out where you can convince yourself that the person is consistently who they've shown themselves to be over a long period of time. And that's the best you can do. At some point, 
if you, for instance, if you're a person who wants kids, right, in this environment today or any environment, but particularly today where you can't really trust people like our grandparents could socially, like the, the, there's not that guardrail, there's not the social script, men and women liked each other much more back then, respected each other, and there wasn't the politics involved in social life the way it is today. It's just so much bullshit involved today. The best you can do is spend enough time and date with intent, seriously. You're not going to be on Tinder. You're going to date seriously and vet your dates and, and be open and honest. And you're not going to have very many dates, but the quality of dates you do get will be intentional and you'll pick them much more objectively rather than what we tend to do, to do today. A lot of people, including me in the past, is like, yeah, they look nice. Let's roll the dice. Let's see what happens. Cross your fingers. Let's hope this goes somewhere. But if you know what you want, date that way. I have a problem with these people saying, yeah, I want serious, but I'm going to ride the carousel and have fun and travel the world and not ready for anything serious. But if it actually, if something hits me in the face, if I win the lottery and someone drags me to serious against my will, then yeah, I could be serious. No, you won't. You want to be casual. You want to have fun. You want to enjoy that time. You want to buy that ticket and take that ride. And while you're on that ride, that's what the ride is. You either decide to get off the ride and get on a new ride and date differently and think differently and be differently. Or if you're just sitting there waiting for luck and the lottery win, whatever it is. I, I talked a bit before about your labels and how you Okay, am I back? What the hell's going on? All right. What has happened? What has happened? Everything's just gone balls up. Anyway, guys, I had a power outage. Uh, not my fault. Everything's screwed up. I have no idea what's going on. So I will just sign off. And uh, yeah, apologies. <laughs> what can I do? Uh, I can't go on like this. Not even the feed. I can't see anyone in the feed. Let me pop out the chat. Like this, there's no feed here, but I think I can actually see you. I can pop out the um, the window. Let's see. Oh, here, cool. All right, I suppose we can sign off with this. But, um, well, yeah, power outage. Everything went out. Power went out and then I had to wait for the internet to come back, which was another like 10 or so minutes. So I think I pretty much said everything. I got my piece out, although the the, the shame is I, I really enjoyed telling you my point of view on this subject. But the, the, the bad thing is people will be watching it and there's going to be 10 minutes of black nothing. And so I really screwed up the presentation of this video as a nice type package because it's live. If this was a video, I'd just edit out that black spot. But, ah, well, thanks for the rest of you who stayed. Because my power went out, I didn't end the stream on YouTube. So YouTube just kept seeing a blank screen. I couldn't switch it off. I had no power. And by the time I logged onto my account through my phone to figure out how to get onto the live stream panel, the power came up. Anyway. Well, <laughs> best human video ever. Humans being very dark today. Yes. Yes, I was blue. Even my camera, every, just everything. Just, all right. 
All right. Any last comments? Let's wrap this up. The ending of this stream, not due to me, sorry, has been a technical screw up. All right. All right. Any last comments? I'll give you guys about a minute and then we'll wrap it up. If the rest of you, um, you want to like, subscribe, give me a thumbs up, thumbs down, ask any questions, any super chats just before we go, I'll answer them. Uh, other than that, if you have a microphone, jump on Gilded. After this, links to my Gilded server where a bunch of us who have microphones, you can come on there and talk. If you don't know how to use Gilded, just jump on YouTube. There's usually a five minute uh, tutorial, how to use push to talk and set up your microphone and make sure it's all um, okay. Do that, but uh, jump on Gilded and um, enjoy having a chat with myself and the rest of us. I'll jump on after this. And uh, yeah. Arias says, what coffee do you drink? Aldi coffee, the organic pods with 20 mils of cooking cream. Yeah, I don't know where Donna is. Luke says, we miss Donna. All right. Hey, Peg, how are you? Okay. Okay. All right. That's it, I think. Well, I'll see you next time. And uh, I'll see those of you with a microphone on Gilded and we can continue this conversation. So um, let's wrap it up. <laughs> the stream's been going for about 50 minutes, but really, I think this stream only went for about 45 or 40 minutes. So anyway, I would like to reiterate for you that what would the person I want to be do and then just do what that person does. Keep it simple, regardless of how you feel. Don't think too much beforehand. Try it out. It doesn't matter if you want to or don't, but I don't feel like uh, who cares? Just jump the shark and just do what the person you would rather be just does. And then you're that person right away. And um, yeah, there's the evidence. You're just doing what that person does. You are them now. And then it's just a matter of time. So I hope this stream was useful. Bar the black spot near the end. And uh, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section. Have you had experience of this or your own kind of twist on this take that's helped you get over the procrastination and overthinking that stops you from taking steps towards the thing you want to want to do or become or be better at or more confident in or because the more you do it you gain evidence in the real world that you've actually done it so kind of like cb um uh, what is it cbt anyway have a good week i won't be here for tomorrow's stream uh i've got uh, an appointment something i can't get out of can't reschedule so that is why I did this one and enjoy your weekend and I'll see the rest of you on Gilded with a microphone after this. All right, guys and girls, have a nice one. Bye.